in this video, we're going to be looking at Autograd. And Autograd is a package included in Gluon to automatically differentiate your functions. So in the previous video, we initialized the parameters of a neural network with random values. And when we pass an input through our network, through these random values, the output is also going to be random. And this isn't great when we're trying to create a classifier model or a regression model. So we define a loss function, which shows how wrong the model is. And we want to update our weights in such a way that we reduce the loss function and make our model better. And the way we do that is we look at the gradient of the loss with respect to each of the individual weights. And then when we have this value, we can do stochastic gradient descent and iteratively optimize our weights. So one way we can find out the gradient is to use the chain rule and backpropagate the gradient through the network. But as the model gets more complicated, the gradient can be trickier to work out. So an alternative is to use Gluon's Autograd package that will automatically work out the derivatives for you. And the way we get started with Autograd is to import Autograd from MXNet. So as a toy example, we're going to be starting with the function 2x squared. And we're going to try and differentiate that using Autograd. So to begin with, we're going to create an ND array with values from 1 to 4. And we're going to pass these values through the function 2x squared and find the derivative at this point. So the first step is that we need to attach a gradient. Now this tells MXNet that we're interested in finding out what the gradient is for a given function. And it allocates the space in memory to record the gradient. So the next thing we do is we want to open the Autograd record context. Now everything that happens in this context will be monitored by Autograd so we can then work out the gradients. So here we define our function as 2 times x times x, which is 2x squared, and the value will be assigned to y. So once this has been computed, we can leave the Autograd record scope, and now we can do the backpropagation stage, which will pass the gradient back through the steps that we've just performed. So we can access the gradient that's been computed by Autograd after the backward stage by accessing the grad property. For our original input x, we can look at x.grad to see the gradient of all the values. So we can work out by hand that we'd expect the gradient to be 4 times x for 2x squared. And so if we check, our input originally was 1, 2, 3, 4. So we'd expect 4 times those values as the gradient. And so here we see 4, 8, 12, 16. So that was all pretty simple, and we could have worked that out by hand. But when we start to build more complicated models, the benefits of Autograd shine through. So in the next section, we're going to be looking at using Python control flows. And we're going to be able to use this while still retaining the gradient and automatically working that out with Autograd, which is a huge benefit. So this is where Gluon gets its flexibility from. Instead of having a static symbolic graph that remains fixed, we can actually change the flow of the process depending on certain values. And Autograd will still manage to work out the gradient and be able to backpropagate that through your network. So let's define a more complicated function instead of 2x squared. Let's create a function f that takes in an input and keeps doubling until the norm reaches 1000. And then finally, it will select one element depending on the sum of its elements. So it's a contrived example, but demonstrates the power of using Autograd. So as before, we're going to create a random input here, just of shape 2. We're going to attach the gradient to let it to let Autograd and MXNet know that we want to record the gradient of A. And then within the Autograd record scope, we're going to run our function and save the output as C. Now, once that's all been performed, we can then call backwards on C, which was our output, and that will pass the gradient back to the input A through the function. So here we can reference the gradient on A as before. We'll just do A.grad and it will show that the gradient is 20, 48, and 0. And so if we work that out analytically, that's what we'd expect to see. 